even scarier movies. Two thousand one to me is maybe the best science fiction movie ever. Uh, people don't normally think of it as a horror film, but it really is a horror film in a lot of different ways. When it first came out in 1968, when I was seven years old, it completely blew me away. I didn't understand it. But that was probably as terrified as I've ever been of anything. 2001 warns us about putting too much dependence into artificial intelligence and machines. Artificial intelligence is extremely scary because it makes us doubt that there's anything meaningful about us as human beings. Are we going to be taken over by something that's more highly evolved than us? 2001 A Space Odyssey tells the story about a mission to this point in space out near Jupiter. There's a computer by the name of Hal 9,000 on this mission. HAL is the whole environment that these astronauts exist in, and he's in control of everything. HAL makes the decision that the human beings on the ship are against him and begins to attack, you know, the people on the ship. When that thing turns evil, it's just this cold, clinical eye staring at you. It doesn't blink. It watches your every move. The computer seems so entertaining and benign. And then to have that computer turn on everybody without ever changing its tone of voice, that's what really freaked me out. There's a moment in 2001 where Dave is trying to get back inside the spaceship and Hal won't open the door for him. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. Hal's voice is just trippy. It's so even and smooth and calm as they're, he's doing these awful, horrible things. It's an incredibly intellectual movie, and yet it operates on this completely nonverbal, visceral level. And that's what I think the scariest of movies do. 2001 really, really taps into both our dependence on technology and our fear of technology. That what happened if you're hooked up to some machine that's supporting your life, and that machine decided to cut you off? And as computers get smarter and smarter, it just seems like we're only getting closer to that. Clockwork Orange, I think, is Kubrick's best film. It's like one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite movie ever. Clockwork Orange is one of those movies that you see and you're forever changed. Its fundamental notion of human nature is profoundly bleak and profoundly dark. Malcolm McDowell as Alex in The Clockwork Orange truly created a terrifying character. He and his, uh, and his lads, who are a bunch of young ruffians, uh, terrorize people uh, in a very wealthy section of London. These guys are scary because they just don't care. They're pure and simple narcissistic psychopaths. The big scene in Clockwork Orange is when they randomly drive out to this old man's house and uh, they rape his wife and they, they tie him down and force him to watch. The rape scene is, is really horrendous. It seems so real. I mean, it feels like you're watching somebody get raped. You're horrified by it, but you can't look away because it's taking place in such a stylized, entertaining way. I'm singing in the rain. Happy refrain, and I'm singing 
just singing in the rain. One of the great things that Stanley Kubrick did in Clockwork Orange was take the song Singing in the Rain, a gleeful song about how amazing it is to fall in love, and uses it to score a brutal, vicious rape scene. It's horrifying. It really is. It's extremely disturbing. And that's a scene that has never lost its power to disturb me. And I've seen the film 15 times. I've you know, written, written about it. I've taught about it. And yet, I see that scene and it still both involves me and completely chills and repels me. So I, that, that's pretty powerful. Clockwork Orange suggests that fundamentally we really are all beasts and that the best thing civilization can do is keep the beast at bay for a while. You know, I was ahead in the 60s, uh, and I don't mean I was ahead of other people. I mean I was ahead, you know, dropped a lot of acid, did a lot of peyote, got stoned, went to see 2001, kind of like, oh, wow, you know. I was thrilled at the idea that he was going to uh, make my book into a film. So many people, that you hear the soft people, yeah, I don't really like horror movies, but they always love The Shining. It was so eerie and strange, and it's one of those movies that you had to see a few times to actually uncover more and figure out. You have a family which you can already sense is having issues. Going to a hotel in the middle of nowhere and being left to take care of it with no one else there. You're scared for them before anything really starts to happen. Most horror pictures, um, when the scary stuff starts, then they find the phones out and their Mars right away. Here, we knew that at the beginning. They're so isolated and the quiet is what gets to me. The hotel was given all the space in the frame and the characters were often quite small within the space. And so you're feeling, you're feeling that the hotel is becoming a character in the film. You feel the cold and you feel the loneliness and you feel the sort of weirdness. Jack Nicholson's son on that tricycle. <laughs> on the wooden floor and then over the carpet and then the wooden floor and the carpet and just that, the sound effects there. And it, and it, it's weird, but it gives you this creepy kind of sensibility. One of the most terrifying images from that film are the, the, the two little girls. Which scare me more than Jack Nicholson with an axe. Come play with us. Come play with us. It's something that's uh, been satirized since. Um, but the first time that you see it, it's dreadfully unsettling. The scariest thing about that movie is the things that are unexplained. And there's a scene where at the end where Shelley Duvall's running through the hotel and she looks down all these different corridors and she just sees a guy in a bear suit and another guy in a tuxedo and there's some kind of sex thing happening. You don't know what's going on, but you know it's not good. But when Jack Nicholson goes into that room, there's like the beautiful woman in the bathtub and he's kissing her and turns into that hideous woman. You don't know whether the horror that takes place is the product of the hotel or is the product of the Jack Torrance character. The most frightening part in the movie is where Shelley Duvall goes downstairs and she looks at the novel that Jack Nicholson has been writing all this time. Picks up that top page and sees uh, the words, all work and no play, makes Jack a dull boy, written over and over and over again on reams and reams of pages in different configurations. What's scary is the look on Shelley Duvall's face, and it's wordless great acting. You realize not only that he's going crazy, but how long he's been going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that to me is one of the scariest moments in in all of movies. That's a truly frightening thing to realize that you're living with somebody that you don't even know.